About 71% of the Earth's surface is covered with water. As astonishing as it sounds, more than 80% of the oceans remain unexplored. The Moon and planet Mars have been mapped to a greater extent than the giant water bodies on Earth. According to experts, immense water pressure in the ocean's depths makes it extremely difficult to explore. Nobody knows how deep the water is in the unknown horrors lurking in the immeasurable depths. The Pacific Ocean is notorious for being the largest and deepest ocean. In the west part of the Pacific lies the Mariana Trench, which is estimated to run as deep as 10,984 meters. As per NASA, the trenches and troughs in the oceans stretch up to 6.8 miles below the surface of the world's deepest oceans. Curious folks venture out thousands of feet deep underwater, from long-lost mythical cities to bizarre animal species that look like they're from some prehistoric era. Over the years, oceanographers, archaeologists, and sea divers have discovered some of the most mind-boggling things in the spine-chilling depths of the murky waters. In this video, we're going to tell you about some of the most peculiar discoveries deep-sea divers captured and no one was supposed to see. Vampire Squid Vampirotuthis infernalis, more commonly known as the vampire squid, is a strange little known creature inhabiting the ocean's deep waters. Regardless of its name, the vampire squid is not actually a squid at all, but is instead a member of a group of creatures known as cephalopods. Its unique feeding method sets the vampire squid apart from other cephalopods. Rather than capturing prey with its tentacles, the vampire squid surrounds itself with a web of mucus that captures tiny organisms floating in the water. This mucus web then provides the vampire squid with a steady supply of food, which it sucks up through its funnel-like mouth. In addition to its unusual diet, the vampire squid also has large eyes and a distinctive red coloration. Therefore, it's a fascinating and mysterious creature that continues to intrigue scientists and casual observers alike. Ruins of Pavlo Petri Whether the lost city of Atlantis is actual or a myth remains debatable. However, several cities have been discovered that are completely submerged. Beautiful, bewildering, and daunting at the same time, these cities hold within them mysteries and secrets that we're unaware of. In 1967, Nick Fleming, a researcher from the University of Southampton, found remains 12 feet below the water, close to the coast of southern Greece under the Mediterranean Sea. The remains belong to the oldest underwater city located to date. Full-fledged streets, courtyards, buildings, and graveyards were discovered, which led to the nearby Pavlo Petri Island. Historians believe that the settlement found underwater once belonged to the nearby island. Pavlo Petri is estimated to be 5,000 years old, dating as far back as 1100 BC. Ancient walls still border the land. Researchers think the city once belonged to the Mycenaeans, ancient Greeks that lived around the finishing of the Bronze Age from 1650 to 1180 BC. In 2016, the site earned the UNESCO designation as a World Monument Watch Site. Mayan Cave Archaeologists made the most unnerving discovery in 2014. While excavating the sinkhole in southern Mexico, they found a submerged cavern filled with elongated skulls and human bodies. Sacoayam, an underwater cavern, is a cenote situated in Yucatan Peninsula, Mexico. A cenote is a natural ditch resulting from the collapse of limestone bedrock that exposes groundwater underneath. The ancient Maya sometimes used them for sacrificial offerings. This underwater cavern lies right outside the ruins of the old Maya city of Mayapan, about 25 miles south of Merida, the capital of Yucatan, Mexico. Mayapan was a major political center between the 12th to the 15th century AD and contained a city surrounded by a stone wall. There were around 40 cenotes within the city walls, which would have served as vital water sources for the 17,000 residents and might have even been the reason the city was built there. However, this cavern is not a regular cenote, and local legend says that a feathered, horse-headed serpent guards the mysterious cavern. Locals of the nearby village tell tales of people spotting the serpent perching in a tree, jumping up, spinning around thrice, and diving into the water. In fact, the villagers never go near the site. There is much fear surrounding what lies inside. Lost City of Thonis, Heraklion the kingdom of Cleopatra was lost for 1600 years until it was discovered off the shores of Alexandria, Egypt. In 1988, marine archaeologists started excavating the ancient city. French archaeologist Frank Godio and his team had been scanning the extensive area of the Abu Kir Bay off the coast of Egypt beneath the Mediterranean Sea when they came across a giant face emerging from the shadows. They had finally found Heraklion. 
It is linked to ancient Greece and dates back as early as the 12th century BC. About 6.5 kilometers off the coast of Alexandria, Egypt, the city was previously engulfed in myths and legends. Better known as Thonis, the ruins are more than 2,000 years old. Around 64 ships, 700 anchors, gold coins, 16 feet tall statues, and Ptolemaic coins were also found. Most noteworthy were the remains of a massive temple of the god Amun Gerab and the tiny sarcophagi for the animals brought there as gifts. Some of the discoveries included shipwrecks, foundations of the palace, and statues of the goddess Isis and a sphinx. Ptolemaic researchers also found a colossal stone head which they believed to be of Caesarian, the son of Cleopatra and Julius Caesar. So far, archaeologists have discovered over 20,000 sunken objects under the sea, and we assume that figure will only keep growing. Much of the history of the city is not known. According to one famous legend, the town was once visited by Paris of Helen in Troy. Remarkably, ruins and artifacts made from granite and diorite are well preserved. The harbor of Thonis once looked over the trade in Egypt. The city was surrounded by a network of canals and is considered ancient Egyptian Venice. The islands were home to small settlements and dwellings. Malpique Crosses La Palma Island is a small island located in the Canary Islands. The island is best known for its black sand beaches and dramatic volcanic cliffs. However, La Palma also has an intriguing history that tourists often overlook. In 1570, a group of Portuguese missionaries boarded a ship bound for La Palma. However, the ship was attacked by French pirates and the missionaries were forced to abandon the boat. The missionaries managed to swim to La Palma, where they built a cross out of driftwood. The cross became known as the Malpique Cross and was considered a sacred symbol by the island's residents. Over time, the Malpique Cross became submerged underwater due to shifting sandbanks. Another theory suggests a rather spooky incident that the French pirates threw the 40 missionaries off the ship. They all drowned and died. They were given the title of martyrs, and 40 crosses were dropped where the incident occurred to create a memorial ceremony for them. However, it was rediscovered in 2009 and has become a popular tourist attraction since then. Bayer of Ancient Rome the city of Bayer was first discovered sometime in 1803 when archaeological researchers found many Roman sculptures, including that of Aphrodite of Bayer. Significant excavations took place in 1941 that led to the discovery of buildings, villas, and thermal complexes. Located in Italy, Bayer was an ancient Roman city on the shore of the Gulf of Naples. It is now part of Bacali in the Campania region. The city dates back to 100 BC and has a scandalous history. Bayer was notorious for the extravagant lifestyles of its leaders, the self-indulgent people, the lavish and corrupt ways of living. The city was raided by Muslim armies in the 8th century and was utterly devastated. In 1500, it was deserted due to the spread of malaria. Due to volcanic eruptions, the ground had lowered mainly below sea level between the 3rd and 5th centuries. By the 8th century, the city sank and was intensely submerged in the Mediterranean Sea. The Glorious Lion City Known as the Atlantis of China, Lion City is one of the most renowned sunken cities in the world. Located at the bottom of an artificial reservoir near Qiando Lake and the gorgeous Wuxi Mountain, the Lion City is called Shicheng City in the native language. During the years 25 to 200 AD, it was an empire and remained one of the most influential cities of China for several centuries. The city is in perfect condition to the present day. Deep sea divers discovered the Lion City in 2001. In 2014, authorities realized the city was still intact underwater and permitted visitors to visit the site by diving. Unlike other cities that became victims of natural disasters and sank, the Lion City was submerged on purpose. In 1959, the Chinese government ordered the city to be flooded to implement a hydroelectric and river dam project. The city is now 40 meters below the water surface. The architectural brilliance of the sunken city dates back to the 16th century. It was once the central political and commercial hub for the Zhejiang province. The town was at its peak glory under the rule of the Ming dynasty during the years 1368 and 1644. Five towering gates line the city. The most noteworthy landmarks of Lion City are its wide streets and 265 archways. Six main streets made of stone link all parts of the city. Baltic Sea Anomaly in June 2011, Peter Lindbergh, Dennis Aberg, and their Swedish Ocean X diving team were treasure hunting on the seabed of the northern Baltic Sea in the middle of the Gulf of Bothnia. They captured an unclear sonar image of an object and suggested that it looked unnatural due to its abnormal features. The indistinct sonar image prompted the speculation that it was the remains of a sunken UFO. 
OceanX described the image as an odd circular object with a 60 feet diameter and features that looked like ramps or stairways. The group revisited the site the next year to get a better picture, but claimed they couldn't get one due to some mysterious electrical interference. Plenty of stories about the sonar image were rumored, and it was highly considered to belong to extraterrestrials and otherworldly beings. Many geologists dismissed such reports and said it was nothing but a natural geological formation. The story remained in the media for quite some time. OceanX received harsh criticism, and the public and experts questioned its motives. Underwater Rivers As astonishing as it sounds, in 2015, a group of divers found a river flowing under sea in Mexico. Given the name of Cenote Angelita, the divers reported it to be 115 deep. According to Anatoly Boloshchin and his group of divers, the river resembles a typical river with trees and leaves flowing on the seabed. Both fresh water and salt water flow in at different points. Scientists believe that the river is just an illusion. According to them, the river is a bed of a thick layer of hydrogen sulfide gas produced by bacteria due to the decomposition of organic matter. It is just a layer of gas that bends and curves like a river but is not an actual river. However, the illusion is so neat it can fool anyone. Dr. Dan Parson of the University of Leeds and his team discovered another underwater river. Situated at the bottom of the Black Sea, this undersea river is said to be flowing with so much water that it can be considered the sixth largest of all the rivers in the world. It is deeper than 100 feet at some points and flows with a speed of 4 miles per hour. According to Dr. Parson and his team, this river runs on a different phenomenon than the Cenote Angelita. Channeling from the salty water of the Mediterranean Sea into the Black Sea through the Bosporus Strait, this undersea river carves a channel of its own which can run as wide as 0.6 miles. The sediments carried by this flow make a riverbed, forming a distinct structure. Frozen Stalactites First discovered in the 1960s, the Brine Icicle, or Brinicle, gained popularity only in 2011 when BBC's Frozen Planet captured it on footage. Put simply, a brinicle is like a stalactite. It is a hollow tube of ice that encloses brine and grows downwards underneath developing sea ice. It grows slowly and descends to the ocean floor. When the sea ice begins to form, salt is discharged from the ice that leaks into the surrounding water. The leakage of salt makes the ice permeable and porous in texture. The resulting brine is highly saline and much colder than ordinary seawater, which freezes at around minus 2 degrees Celsius. As it begins to plunge into the depths, a sheath of seawater forms around it in an icicle-like shape. The water in the icicle itself does not freeze as its density has increased and its freezing temperature has decreased because of the high salinity. It takes the icicle up to 12 hours to develop and reach the ocean floor. It is described as an incredible and extraordinary spectacle. However, when the icicle touches the bottom of the sea, it creates a fast-moving channel of ice that freezes everything instantly. All the fish and water animals who fail to escape the icy web end up freezing to death. This phenomenon has rightly earned these icicles the title of Black Pools of Death. Giant Oarfish Deep underwater, giant oarfish are among the largest fish in the sea. These creatures can grow up to 50 feet in length and weigh over 600 pounds. Despite their size, they are very elusive and very little is known about them. However, there have been more reports of sightings of these massive fish in recent years. In 2014, a Japanese fisherman caught a giant oarfish over 18 feet long, and earlier this year, an American tourist spotted a giant oarfish while snorkeling in the waters off Hawaii. According to Japanese folklore, giant oarfish is an omen of impending earthquakes, so their glimpse leaves many people wondering if they could be a sign of something big happening soon. Mythical City of Dwarka The city of Dwarka is thought to have been found by Lord Krishna, one of the most revered figures in Hindu mythology. According to legend, Krishna established a new capital for his kingdom after the Battle of Kurukshetra. He chose the site of Dwarka because it was located on the coast of India and had a natural harbor. Krishna ruled over Dwarka for many years and it soon became a prosperous and thriving city. However, after Krishna's death, the town was destroyed by invaders. It wasn't until 1956 that archaeological excavations uncovered the remains of the ancient city, revealing its fascinating history. Today, Dwarka is a popular tourist destination, and its mythical past continues to capture the imagination of visitors worldwide. Atlet Yam of Israel In 1984, marine archaeologist Ehud Galilee discovered the site of Atlet Yam in Israel off the coast of Atlet. They found ruins of a Neolithic coastal settlement, horses, wells, graves, and skeletons. 
The site of Atlet Yam dates between 6300 and 6900 BC. It expands to 40,000 square meters and is 10 meters below sea level. Seven megaliths are arranged in a stone semicircle around a freshwater spring in the center of the settlement, which might have been the site of water rituals. Researchers believe the settlers had to leave because of a natural catastrophe. A theory suggests that a tsunami hit the region due to a Mediterranean volcanic eruption. The large piles of fish found at the site support this theory. Moreover, two skeletons of a woman and a child revealed the earliest tuberculosis cases. Sleeping Whales Recently, a scuba diver in the Caribbean came across something unexpected – sperm whales sleeping in standing positions. The sperm whale is an enormous toothed whale known for its migratory habits. They typically spend the summer in high-latitude areas like the Arctic and then head to lower latitudes for the winter. However, this group of sperm whales was found in an area known as the Great Australian Bight, which is not typically considered whale territory. Scientists believe the whales may have become stranded there when a large storm swept through the area. Whatever the reason for their unusual location, it's clear that these sperm whales are out of their element. Let's cross our fingers that they find their way back to safe waters soon. Sperm whales are typically found in deep water, so it's scarce to see them close to shore. And while it's not unheard of for sperm whales to sleep in a standing position, it's still quite unusual. The scuba diver snapped photos of the sleeping whale before swimming away and leaving it to rest. It's an encounter that he won't soon forget. Shipwrecks the discovery of a shipwreck is an exciting event for maritime archaeologists. Once a site has been located, excavation can begin. It can be lengthy and complicated, but it's essential to recover the remains of the ship and any artifacts that may be associated with it. The excavated items then carefully studied to learn more about the vessel and crew. The discovery of a shipwreck is always a momentous occasion. It provides insight into our past and helps us to understand our history in a new way. Shipwrecks are time capsules that can teach us about the people who built and sailed them and the cultures they were a part of. They remind us that even in our modern world, mysteries are still waiting to be solved. For almost a century, the Titanic lay at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean, its wreck slowly being claimed by rust and decay. However, in 1985, a team of French and American archaeologists finally discovered the remains of the ill-fated ship. Since then, several more expeditions have been launched to explore the Titanic's wreck site and recover artifacts. These objects provide a fascinating glimpse into the lives of the ship's passengers and crews. From personal items like jewelry and clothing to larger objects like furniture and china, the relics of the Titanic offer a unique window into history. These artifacts are a reminder of the tragedy that occurred on April 15, 1912. For others, they represent the courage and resilience of those who survived against all odds. Either way, the wrecks of Titanic remain an enduring source of fascination for people worldwide. Valuable Artifacts In 2015, archaeologists were excavating the famous 2,050-year-old Roman shipwreck near the island of Antikythera, Greece. They discovered more than 50 new artifacts, such as a bronze armrest that was possibly a part of a throne, a bone flute, a pawn from an old board game, luxury ceramics, and glassware. Metal detectors have detected the presence of buried objects on the whole site of the shipwreck. Fifteen lead artifacts were recovered, including a tremendous salvage ring, two anchor components, and several pieces of hull sheathing. A Rhodian amphora neck with stamped handle and an intact Koan Demi amphora were also found. A series of incomplete luxury goods were recovered, including mosaic glass, clear glass, part of a bone flute, a blue hemispherical bead, and an ornate mold-formed table jug. A stone statuette base, rebated and filled with an unidentified substance, a section of bronze furniture that likely belongs to a throne, and wooden remains from the ship's hull has been unearthed. Many bits of bronze were also found, small and large nails, what may be the loop end of a spoon or skillet, and a very fragile bronze mass next to the blue bead. Historical Weaponry In 2013, archaeologists discovered numerous artifacts off the coast of Sicily, Italy. What they learned was the site of the first ancient naval battle. They found weapons, armor, helmets, and battering rams that date back to 2,000 years ago. All the artifacts remained undamaged even after two millennia had passed. The artifacts are the remains of the Battle of the Agadi Islands, also known as the Battle of the Iagates. It was the last fight from the First Punic War, which occurred in 241 BC. The Romans combated the Carthaginians in a battle that peaked in more than 20 years of conflict as the Romans exerted efforts to gain a hold in the Mediterranean Sea. 
While the Carthaginians were stronger on the water, the Romans lay in wait, trapping the Carthaginians and blocking off their sea route in an unexpected attack. Up to 50 Carthaginian ships were sunk, murdering up to 10,000 men. The Roman victory set them on the way to Europe-wide domination. Musa, Mexico Musa, Mexico is an underwater museum located in the waters off the coast of Mexico. The museum is a haven for a collection of sculptures that have been submerged in the ocean. The sculptures are built from various materials, including concrete, metal, and glass. Visitors to the museum can view the sculptures through glass-bottom boats or underwater scooters. Over time, the museum became a crucial part of the ecosystem. The museum also offers snorkeling and diving tours. Visitors can get up close and personal during these tours with the sculptures. The underwater museum is a popular destination for both locals and tourists. Around 750,000 people visit it annually. Train Wreck In 1985, Paul Helper was diving off the New Jersey coast while trying to map out the base of the ocean with a magnetometer. To his surprise, he spotted two trains underwater. The site became known as the Locomotive Graveyard as the remains of two rare Planet Class 222T models were found lying there. The train model was produced only for a short time. It's believed that the wrecks of the trains found 90 meters below the water might result from an accident. It either accidentally fell off a ship's barge or was thrown off deliberately due to the risk of sinking. It is now a popular spot for wreck diving. Ancient Computer in 1901, a bunch of snorkelers, while exploring a shipwreck off the island of Antikythera, found a computer, a discovery they least expected. Initially, they couldn't figure out what it was. It took scientists a couple of years to discover that the mantle clock-sized device was a computer. With the help of X-ray technology, they could break down the baffling mystery of the sea discovery. It is believed that the device is the earliest form of computer known to humankind, was designed to serve many purposes such as predicting astronomical positions and eclipses of calendars and counting down the days to the next Olympic Games. The old computer is well preserved and is displayed at the National Archaeological Museum of Athens. That is all for today. Which underwater discovery did you find the most fascinating of all? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.